Welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Scott Nerney. We are at the lovely Coesit Inn, where the menu is ready for you. Have a seat, have at the bar, enjoy yourselves. It is fantastic. With me tonight is Amanda Matola, marketing expert, author, mother, wife, so many more hats. I'm well, thank you so yeah. much for having me. It's Tell us exciting a to bit. be here. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I was born in Paraguay, as you know, and I was adopted when I was young after the Strassner dictatorship, and I was adopted by an American family, brought to the U.S., and my life has been ups and downs and all around, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to be here and have all the opportunities that I've been blessed with. And you have a family here? Yes, yep. So my family's in Connecticut, and then my husband and my two um, sons, a one and three-year-old, live in Warwick. And what do you do for a living? I own Ocher Way. It's a marketing agency, and we help our clients connect the dots between their mission, their brand, and then their clients. And we use promotional products and branded apparel to help get the job done for them. So a little bit of advertising, a little bit of oh, yeah. business building? Yeah, I use a lot of intuition and intentionality in what I do. I like to get to know you know, where the client's mission stands, what the vision of their company is to help curate the best items for them and help them come up with some you know, innovative ideas to reach their, their demographic that they're trying to connect with. A more personal approach than just seeing someone on a website that says exactly. you can go ahead and... and get your logo on this and we'll send you 50 pieces and never see you again or know what you're doing? Yeah, I, I think with what I do, there's some bad um, feelings about it at times because people think it's just like tchotchkes or junk or stuff. And I really try to like stay above that and make sure the products I'm providing are effective, practical, have more than a one-time use. And you know when I can, that they're sustainable. So I have a uh, production facility I work with that sources sustainable ingredients for their lip balm and lotions and sunscreen and their sunscreen is also reef safe which which I think is pretty cool. And I understand you're an author. I've read your book. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> it is fantastic. Um, for those thinking about getting a book with this love, young lady, it talks a little bit and I'll just to try to give my view from it. Sure. It talks a little bit about your upbringing how you apply that today, and more importantly, like it could stop there and I'd have been thrilled, but you ask a lot of questions in the book about trying someone to help themselves, yeah. a lot of self-help and self-reflection. So give us the title of the book so people will have it. Sure. It's Learning as a Lifelong Journey, Being Your Leader, Overcoming Your Fears, and Succeeding in Your Career. And I think you do a lot of that all through the book. Um, talk a little bit about how this came to be. Yeah, so I had my second son last June, and as you can imagine, <laughs> having children in itself is a lot of work, yeah. and going, I had an, a second C-section, so just going through that process of having to heal and being, you know, bedridden for a little bit is really challenging for me because I like to go, go, go at all times, and while I was home with my son, uh, up late at night, I was ordering so much on Amazon that I didn't remember. And I was like, oh, I, I need to be doing something different with my time and my wallet. So I switched gears and I started writing instead of shopping. And I did that for four months straight. So from August to December, I had a completed book. And then it went into the editing process. And I truly felt called to write it because I've lost a couple friends to suicide. And I saw how the pandemic affected so many people from a mental health standpoint. And just a, you know, where do I fit in this world, right? Because people were isolated in all different situations and scenarios with or without people, and it was lonely. So I was trying to create something that connected people from different walks of life because pe the stories in my book, you know, I haven't experienced them all. Some of them are mentors or even strangers or people that I admire that I captured their stories because I just see the value in connecting people with people. Otherwise, you know, life's really lonely. And you took a, a big risk and step to talk about your personal life, yeah. your upbringing and, and your birth parents and your real parents. And there's a lot behind the scenes to uncover that I think you did a great job of, of bringing that into someone else's life yeah. and having them reflect as to where they've come from. 
Yeah, I think that, you know, when you think back on it at the end of the day, we're so much more connected and similar than we are you know, often want to believe, right? We, we look at, like, even in politics, right, you look at all, like, the stark differences between the two, and it just seems like it's always contentious, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think people just want the security, safety, and they want, you know, to know that there's, like, a future for them, and everyone's future is different, but, um, yeah, I really feel that, you know, this, like, kind of growth and mindset and um, mindfulness is such an important piece that everyone should be incorporating into their journeys. And you've had some top-notch mentors and and famous people along the way to help you and, and be part of this book. Let's touch upon a couple of those. Yeah, of course. So um, one of the individuals that endorsed the book was uh, Fernando Fanal. He is the well, former Paraguay ambassador, and that's where I was born. And we connected because I funded... Um, my trip to find my birth family through recycled water bottle deposits. And he caught wind of it because in Paraguay, during that time, they were really pushing for sustainability. So in his RSS feed, he got an alert, you know, that this Paraguayan American woman who was adopted was trying to find her family. And that's how she was, you know, going to pay for the trip to go down and do so. So he reached out to me and we connected and he's been a part of my story. He helped me find my family and we still keep in touch. Um, he actually tried running for mayor of the capital of Paraguay, which was really cool. And uh, he endorsed the book for me just because he believes in, you know, my journey and what I'm trying to do to help people and, you know, just you know, shine a positive light on the country because they've had a lot of corruption over the years. And also, uh, I believe the former CEO of Subway. Yeah. Yep. So Don Fritman's a friend of mine. I reached out to him on LinkedIn. I saw that this was over a decade ago. I saw that he had gone to the same college as me. And I said, why the heck not? I'm going to message him and sure. invite him out for a coffee at Starbucks. And he accepted. I was shocked. And we met and he told me his story and how he overcame, you know, an addiction. Um, and he was, you know, abusing substances and it was affecting his life in a really horrific way. And it got to a point where, you know, he may have died if he hadn't had the support he had from the CEO of Subway, who said to him, you know, Don, I want you to go get the help you need and there'll be a job right here waiting for you. And I thought that was such a powerful lesson in leadership that I've always kind of cataloged in the back of my brain for when I someday would own my company and kind of the grace I would give to other people when they were going through their own struggles. And he so kindly endorsed the book and he allowed me to include his story in it. And it's just a beautiful thing that now he's retired and he's giving back to individuals that, you know, society might have coined them as like junkies or just some of these negative terms when he sees it as an opportunity for people to grow from their past. And he's giving back because it's a struggle and a life that, you know, that he walked in their shoes. So he's able to now, in his retired life, give back to those that are struggling currently and share his experience. And what would you say you found in your research and talking to people one of the biggest misconceptions about being a great leader and, and you know, taking what it what it really takes to make a leader yeah I think that you know people think that you have to be a, a certain type of person to be a good leader but I've seen such wonderful leaders in people at all stages of a company, right? You can have someone working at the front desk that can be a phenomenal leader and helping to push forward the corporate culture and you know the vision of the company in maybe a smaller way or a less um, you know high profile way, but they're doing their part you know as part of like the bigger picture. And you know I think pe some people think that you have to be at the top, you know, to be a good leader. And that's not always the case, or actually, I don't think that's ever the case. I think that any level, you can choose to be a leader of your team, a leader of your family, a leader, you know, of your friends. And that's just by making good choices and, you know, being kind to others and just things that seem so simplistic, but they really make the biggest difference. And that's, you know, how you can achieve that quality leadership title. Okay. And where can people find your book? Uh, they can go to Amazon. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And also Barrington Books, uh, some local shout outs. Uh, okay. And a gracious soul in East Greenwich carries it as well. And on my website, amandamatola.com.
And doing a few book signings here and there? Yeah, here and there. I just had one at Barrington Books. I'm going to be doing a couple, lining up a couple others. So uh, if you go onto my site and uh, check out the mailing list, you can learn more. Okay. And we're not done yet. We have oh. a little tribute to James Lipton. Okay. So in his interviews, he did a lot of quick questions. So I'll throw a few at you. Sure. What sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? The waves. Waves? Ocean waves. It's like so on the Rhode Island wave? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> and what is your favorite word? My favorite word would have to be inspiration. I just, it's what drives me forward. I love hearing inspiring stories, and it's just, it's a great word. What job would you least like to do? Least like to do. So I have a list of 10. I play this game with my husband in the car. Okay. Um, mortician. I couldn't. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. All right. Yeah. I could never be a barista, a waiter, or anything that has to memorize something like that. No, couldn't <laughs> do it. Um, and lastly, if you could do anything with 0% chance of failure, what would you try? I would want to travel to every country in the world. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's an accomplishment. That's a bucket list. It's a bucket list. It's yeah. a lot of countries. <laughs> Well, I really thank you for coming on. Um, I highly encourage people to go out, get a copy of this book, um, stop at Barrington Books, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. There was someone in East Greenwich. Uh, a Gracious Soul. Okay. Stop by, get this book, go on your website, take a look for book signings. Um, a fantastic book. will really help you, and you'll pass it on to someone else that will help them as well. And I wish you a lot of luck in your business Thank you so and much. all the companies out there that are using your business. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks. for having me. Thank you.